On the last video, we talked about the, how can students actually make sure that their, their contributions to the classroom environment are happening within the context of a safe environment uh, where some rules of conduct are met and so that the kids are not actually feeling that they actually can participate without being attacked and without the problems that happen sometimes in classroom discussions. And we also talked about how can students make sure that they are doing substantial contributions to the discussion and making these contributions that actually enhance the classroom environment. And I welcome you to, uh, to please uh, we actually read this discussion guide in order to uh, absorb some of those ideas that we've been talking about here. Now, this is actually focused on how to actually take the role of a teacher to get the most points out of the classroom discussion collaborative environment. You can get a lot of points for actually participating in, uh, in during the week. You can get five points for every participation that you do, and it's a, in, a, a good participation that actually is substantial. You can get double the points if your contribution actually makes more people contribute, so you can get more points for that. Um, uh, but the way, to, the way to get the most points is to either create your own wiki space, your own blog, or your own classroom discussion, which then gen in turn generates more discussion. And so to assume the role of a teacher is where you're going to get the most points, between 30 and 50 points for every time you do this. Now, to facilitate a discussion and to do that, it's not that easy. It's kind of hard. First of all, make sure that you actually act like a teacher and actually use proper grammar, spelling, and punctuation. Nobody wants to participate in a discussion that looks like somebody who doesn't know how to write started. Also, ask the questions in a variety of ways, allowing for the people to actually have a variety of answers. Uh, layer your questions. In other words, don't ask, really ask one question, but ask one question, another question, another question, another question, all within the same question. So, for example, recently I put on the website, uh, what would happen if humans could do binary fission? Uh, what would be different about the way that we reproduce and about the way we live and die in society? Uh, how would you expect the economy and, 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 and laws to change? You see how you actually, by asking lots of layered questions, you're going to en enhance more participation because different people can take in from different points of those, those questions. Design things which are thought-provoking, which people have to dig deep to answer. They can't just answer with a split second. They actually have to think in order to answer these questions. Write the questions that force the kids to reflect and spend effort and time. And you actually should do the same when you create the question. You know, the more, the stronger the question, the more engaging the discussions will be. Uh, when people are, discussion stops, follow up with supplementary or additional questions or even explanations that make people go into more clarity or depth in the discussion and make sure you, you comment on people's discussions if you feel that the discussions are not being focused or substantial. So take over the discussion and make sure that it's take, going in the direction that you expect it to go if you're in charge of, of a discussion. Uh, add media or links to media in order to make, uh, inspire people to talk more. Uh, a lot of people like when they can actually interact with those things. A lot of people are audio and visual learners. Um, to create good questions, refer to your class notes or to the material that we're covering in class right now and find ideas for discussion within those things and prepare yourselves and help you prepare you and your friends for quizzes and exams by asking questions that you think will appear in those critical thinking exams. So you can do that. Uh, again, like I said before, be creative about the way you ask the questions. That's the most important thing. And use a lot of variety of question types. Uh, you, can, you can ask a yes or no question that asks them to say why they said yes or no. You can give them a multiple choices and then say why they, uh, they chose that choice. Or you can ask them to suggest a solution for a problem. And then once there's enough suggestions, you can ask them to vote on the best suggestion. So there's the vote and suggest system. Uh, you, the same things that I, as a teacher, I'm trying to use it in class. And also remember to actively respond to your peers' ideas and questions. In other words, take an active role in it within a discussion so you can make sure it stays on track. Uh, Complement participations to make sure the kids, uh, when they do exceptional questions, highlight those exceptional questions so kids uh, know what they're supposed to be doing. Provide encouragement and direction for people who are not actually doing uh, as good as, they, as others are. Don't just say good things about the good ones. Also encourage the ones which are not quite there, even as you request them to do something better than that. Uh, and when you do that, make constructive suggestions on how you can actually help them become better in the development of their ideas. So say, maybe next time you could have done something like this. Uh, be open-minded. It, yes, it's your discussion, but be open-minded to other ideas within a discussion. You know, it, you're just creating the discussion. You're not monopolizing it. 
uh, and try to make sure to res maintain a respectful tone and set an example that others can then follow as they are going through the discussion. Um, and in the second page here, I talk about how to create good questions. Uh, basically, what kind of questions will be the best questions? Um, the best questions will challenge people to think. They will encourage people with well, multiple points of view. They are not just some things that will be one or the other. They engage, make people uh, do analysis, synthesis, or evaluation, or creation. So you can use that higher level questioning guide that I gave you guys in class in order to do that. They, ex they excite curiosity. They build community. Uh, they draw on personal experiences or make people actually draw on personal experiences to give examples. They, are, they can be interpretive and ask a, a question that doesn't necessarily have a right answer, but it's more like up to the person's opinion or it's subjective. Um, also, you can ask evaluative questions in which kids have to uh, compare or uh, vote for the best point of view. And also, uh, suggest questions that ask, force the kids to problem solve or force solutions for a certain problem or brainstorm. Or debate questions which force the kids to take charge of discussing different aspects of the same uh, of, of the same topic. Now, the best questions always starts with why, how, uh, instead of just what. All right, and um, don't do factual questions. Questions that have one right answer; those are the awful ones. Or questions that just basically t tell the kids to open a book and look up the information. You want to get questions that they can't get from googling. They have to get these answers by actually going out there and searching for those questions. And the rhetorical questions are also awful because they're by design, designed not to be answered. So don't ask questions that you don't expect, that can't, are not expectable to be answered. And also, uh, in the, like I said, in bad media, uh, layer your questions, be controversial, encourage connections, and be flexible. Uh, don't be locked in into an agenda. Don't let people flow and actually say what they want to say. And this is how you actually create a discussion and take the role of a teacher to get the most points out of the classroom discussions. Now, when you are acting like a teacher, either because you created a discussion and you want to make monitor it, or because you were participating in another discussion and you think what, the, what is done is not appropriate, either because of lack of following of the conduct code, or because of the lack of, of a substantial participation, how do you correct your peers? Yes, it is your job to correct your peers. You can, you can get five points every time you do so. But remember to criticize the, the material, not the person. And if you're criticizing the way the person responded, also still follow the same rules. Use I statements. Um, use substantial examples. Try to say what the person did right instead of just what the person did wrong. But also actually give constructive criticism in which you tell the person how to be better. Um, so some of the things that you can do to actually uh, create this environment where peers edit each other without actually hurting each other or being mean to each other is first to compliment each other with specific examples on why they deserve compliments. So for example, great job on using that key term there. It fit exactly the term. Good transition there. You, you went from that topic to that topic. Uh, oh wow, you really did a good job in summarizing your conclusion or everything we've been saying. Interesting point. Nobody brought that up yet. I'm all right. So things like that that actually give a substantial reason for you to be uh, uh, complimenting them is what you need to do. Uh, critiquing versus not criticizing. So like I just said, uh, make sure you do compliment is specific to what the person did wrong, even as you tell her what she did right. So uh, I like what you said here, but try to repeat avo avoiding this word word too much. Use a thesaurus. It can give you different ideas on how to use the same, different meanings for the same world. world. Uh, in this introducing sentence, you should really make a main point more clear or using a, very, a better thesis statement. Uh, when I started reading your point, I didn't really go and know what you were going for. Uh, instead of relating to this, why don't you relate to something else? Uh, you should have made it try to put more evidence or make a connection to real life examples. Uh, things like that. So make concrete suggestions that actually... Uh, help the person become a better writer. So, you know, you can ask her like, um, good, I like what you said, but you just said um, what? Can you tell us how this is relevant? Or give us more uh, um, uh, basis for your thesis, more uh, evidence? Uh, yours was like, instead of saying too short, you can say something like, this is a good, but you should expand on this a little bit more and maybe give, uh, give us a little more information on this, this, on that. Or you can say, instead of like just asking, uh, 
what? I didn't get this? You can, you just, you can basically say, can you please rework this specific session because I did not really understand it and then you can quote what the person said. Uh, also, clarity. You can ask questions that help your peers understand that they made errors that made people become mis misleading on what they were trying to say. Um, so, for example, you can say, uh, what does this say about that? How does this relate to that? Uh, how is this related to the theme of this? You know, so you're actually asking the, the, the student to develop a specific thing and be more clear about her point. Uh, also, contemplate and give co thoughtful suggestions. Take the time to actually say what the person could do better about this. Uh, if uh, Whether you uh, you're criticizing the person's point or the way the person said it, you should al always get feedback in ways that help improve the person. So, for example, this statement seems to contradict what you said earlier. What exactly did you mean? Replace this word with a cinnamon to make a more positive connotation because the way you said it, it made it, made it into a negative connotation when you were actually trying to make a good connotation. Your diction was not the best one, I think. Uh, or I think you, you could have used a better diction. Try to make a quote or introduction that actually makes, makes people interested in, write, in writing what you're saying or reading what you're saying. Um, um, next time we defend your point, actually give examples. So try to actually create a criticism that actually helps the person improve, not just something that says you didn't do a good job. But remember that you need to be doing this if you're actually trying to earn points for the mastery system. All right? Now, the last thing I want to show you is the actual code of content. I'm not going to read this because basically what it does, it goes over the main points of everything I talked about on the last two videos. And your point is to read this, and then either, uh, and then we're not going to sign this on paper because I, I want to save paper, but I'm going to open a thread that says uh, online student code of conduct agreement thread, where you actually have to reply and say, aye, aye, sir, I agree, you know, so that we all together voice our agreement of the student code of conduct. But we're going to do that. Uh, we always do that after the students brainstorm on things that they, they want to add to the conduct code as well. Now, um, since I have a few minutes before before my time is up here, I actually wanted to uh, show you uh, some uh, some of those things I skipped really quick on the on the previous video, such as strong center starters. You know, uh, things like always use people's names. So things like uh, although Zach made a strong point about this, I think that this. You know, uh, I respectfully disagree with what Lawrence said because of this, this, and that. Thank you, Manuel, for sharing this. You did a very good job. Great point, Angela. Have you considered this though? You know. Uh, Building on what uh, Dustin said, I would, also, I would like to clarify that, you know. Brady highlighted this, and I also would like to add this. Uh, Caitlin, on your introduction statement, you said this, 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 and this. Uh, I was really confused. Can you clarify this statement because I didn't really understand what you were saying? Um, Carmen, your post reminded me of this other topic, of this other event that happened in my real life. And so you see how you can, if you start right, you finish right. And remember, to finish right... Finish with a question or something that makes forces people to participate again. You know, and we talked about that in the previous video. Uh, and some of those strategies are here to end these things. Um, um, and so forth. Uh, please uh, um, start using these strategies. Don't just uh, get over this. You're trying to create an environment where you actually, the discussions are actually taking over. And if you're not doing that, you're not going to get your collaborative classroom points. And you're probably not going to get a good master persistent grade because you require those points. Now, you don't need to participate too much, although a lot of people throughout the year end up participating a lot because they get it, it becomes fun. Because we as humans like to engage in discourse. Um, however, a minimal participation is required. I do expect you to be creative uh, once in a while and create your own topics of discussion or your own blogs or your own Wikipedia spaces. And I also expect you to be to be uh, substantive on the way you respond to other people's questions and maybe in ways that actually foster more communication so you get double the points. I also expect to criticize each other's work in substantial ways that give them uh, feedback on what they need to be better and constructive criticism that criticizes the, the, the way it was said or what it was said instead of the person that said it. And I do expect you to start using these techniques to create an environment where you participate at least uh, a few times a week. 
Uh, so every other day, you should do at least a couple of participations throughout, throughout the discussion board. And you're, you're not supposed to be spending more than 10 to, 10 to 15 minutes per time you participate, but you should definitely participate in, in a substantial way so that we can have an awesome online color adaptive environment.